Hello everyone, my name is Karina. I go by Curtsy on social media, and welcome back to the Kirshi Warrior Cosplay Series. Now, I've been away um, a couple of weeks because of some personal matters, but I am back and ready to continue the Kirshi Warrior Cosplay Series and explore everything that I can create for this costume. In today's video, we're going to be diving headfirst and starting my adventure into samurai armor. Now, for this video, we're going to be making the arm guards, and also I'm going to be making a Kyoshi Warrior headpiece. Now, when I first began my research to figure out what exactly I was going to make this armor out of, I realized really quick that at one, I could not make this out of metal. I have no skill, no tools, and no budget for that. Also, I can't make it out of paper either, which a lot of reproductions of samurai armor have been able to accomplish. So at first thought, I thought, okay, why don't I make this out of foam? But then I realized very soon that foam is just not gonna work. Um, very thin foam is very easy to rip. It's not that strong. Thicker foam is what it, what it sounds like, thicker. So it's not gonna give me that shape that I want to recreate the armor. Plus everything in foam is very lightweight which is what a lot of people love about it. But in terms of what I am creating, lightweight pieces is not gonna make the shapes and have that real feel to it that I need. Because a lot of pieces are weighted on samurai armor, and if the foam is sitting on me and doesn't wanna pull down naturally and hang with that weight to it, then it's not gonna look right. So I soon realized what material I needed, and that was Warbla. Now, a lot of people in the cosplay community don't use Warbla too much anymore, and it's mostly because of how expensive it is compared to how much you can make out of foam. But over time, people have shifted more towards foam craft because it's lightweight and Warbla tends to be heavier. So when you're at a convention, you don't want all that weight on your shoulders. But looking at this cosplay and realizing exactly what I want to create, I realized that Warbler is the best option for me because it's a thinner material, but it's strong and it has a lot of weight to it. So it mimics, in a way, metal sheets. So that is what I decided to use. So let's talk more about what these arm guards I am making are. So in Samurai Dress, they have something called Kote, which is basically like an armored sleeve that goes all the way from the hand and up the arm. Earlier Kote extend underneath the armor and wrap around in front, and later Kote end, fr end from like the hand up to the shoulder, the shoulder here, where they attach to other pieces. So the way Kote are made is that it consists of a fabric base, and on top of that fabric base is what sits armor pieces and chainmail. Now I soon realized that a traditional Kote is not exactly going to work for this costume because of how long the pieces are, and that length added would cover off the poofy sleeve detail of the Kyoshi Warriors. So automatically I had to shorten that right, right down to before my elbow. And then another thing I realized was that the later period Kote cover the knuckles and have a th thumb piece that extends up and because of that, it would make it very difficult for me to wield a fan. Now, I'm pretty sure there is a way to wield a fan with that type of shape on your hand, but I am not skilled in doing so, and it would be very difficult for me to learn. So I fell down a rabbit hole of research, and I came across something that is a variation of the Kote sleeve, it's just earlier, and that is the Yoteshuni Gote. And I apologize for my pronunciations. So this is basically Kote, but in its earlier form. So it's singular plates that sit at specific points. Instead of having these multiple plates that can be in strips and different designs all across the arm, and there is no pieces for the knuckles and the thumb. Yotashuni Gote were more popular in the 11th century, and then they fell out of popularity by the time we get to the 1500s. Another interesting thing about Yotashuni Gote is that earlier versions don't have chainmail, which is perfect for what I am trying to create because when observing how to best translate the Kyoshi Warrior cosplay into reality, one of the quickest things I realized was that when comparing it to Samurai Dress, the animation makes it very simplified and some of the details will be weird and hard for me to replicate if I have to put in chainmail. Keep in mind that the Do I will be creating in another video is 
going to be a different time period in samurai dress than the kote that I'm making. Everything I am making for the Kyoshi Warrior cosplay takes from Japanese dress and is edited to look more like the Avatar universe. So it's more of a fantasy what if, but I am taking inspiration and researching into how it most likely would have been like in real life. So without further ado, let's start working with some warbla. <laughs> So the sewing table is a bit of a mess right now because I have a million things going on in this room and one of them is I'm finally testing out the warbla that I bought for this project. Now to learn how to best use this material and to familiarize myself with how it works like physically because it's one thing to watch a bunch of people online use it and another thing to use it entirely yourself. So what I'm doing now is I am practicing with one of the headpieces. So I'm going to make something simple and hopefully this gives me a good idea on how everything happens with this material so that when I go on to the armor, which is in its chaotic cardboard form, then I'll be able to successfully finish the armor. So I'm gonna go on to these pieces. So one thing I'm finding is it's very difficult to mark this side of the material. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to the rougher side and hopefully it's easier to mark on that side. So I'm gonna try out the sandwiching effect that can happen with the warbler. So I'm gonna give myself way more room around the edges just in case because what I want to do is I want to be able to put this piece on top and sandwich both layers and then crease out these edges and then hopefully everything's together and nice and stiff and moldable. Okay, well, my mat is warping. Other than that, it's actually starting to, yeah, it's warming up. I think I'm gonna blast it one more time and see if I can get it more. Let's try it. Okay, so it is getting a little sticky. Warbler should come apart pretty easily, so let me try something real quick. Oh, that top. So I'm going to try put in my little square. This guy right there. Hope he's centered. Also, I'm folding the cardboard in half so that I don't have a very sharp edge, but more of a rounded edge so that I can easily map out these corners. Yeah, this stuff is super cool. The only thing I will say about this though that I have to be very careful about, and I'm probably gonna fix right now, is that if you have long nails, or at least longish nails, and if you're not careful, you can puncture into the warbler and leave a nail mark there. So what I may have to do is I may have to go cut my nails to make sure I don't have that problem going forward. And here we have my first attempt at warbler. Right here, I cut too close to the foam, and so it opened up. But other than that, all the other edges held close and I was able to get a really cool shape on the inside. It hardened really, really fast. And I know for a fact this is gonna survive on my head. I don't know if you can see it, but I heated up a scrap of warbler and I'm trying to close up the seam where you can see the foam. Okay, this is super cool. I was able to seal up where that foam peeked out, heating up more warbler and sticking it.
So to attach the bands onto the headpiece, I'm going to be using something from the Cosbon Health Pack, which is the strips of the adhesive sheets. And this is the final headpiece. I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially since I was able to use the thin craft foam and combine it with the Warbler as a core to be able to make a three-dimensional feeling. So to begin the Cote pieces, I'm starting off by wrapping up my arm in plastic wrap and tape. And what this does is it gives me a perfect blueprint of the size of my arm, and I'm able to draw on lines and cut myself out, and then I have a perfect pattern. If the setup looks a little weird, that's because I shot this in my acting class. I decided that if I'm doing a project, I might as well do something that also has to do with my own personal projects. Okay, so for the Cote pattern, I have removed the thumb and also the top part, although maybe I'll keep the top part, I haven't decided yet. But I mainly removed that part because I feel like if I added the thumb into the equation, that when I'm wearing this, it'll block and hit my fan, so I won't be able to wield my fan. So I feel like a Kyoshi Warrior wouldn't wear this thumb piece because of that. So it's being removed and instead I'm just gonna do this area right here. So from here down, we'll be covered, but my fingers won't be covered by armor. Okay, now that I have cut out the duck for the cote, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two layers. And what I am using is this brown linen blend for the inside of the cote, where it's gonna touch the silk of my kimono, and some leftover silk of the evergreen. And this is gonna be used on the outside of the cote. And this is the layer that you see. Okay, so I want to bind around the cote, but my only problem is that the only color of the fabrics I'm using that even matches it well enough is some of the leftover fabric from the Hakama. So the issue with this though is all these scraps are cut on the straight grain and none of them are on the bias. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, use it even though it's on the wrong direction. So to sew on the binding, I begin by stitching down one side of it to the edge of the material. Then I'm going around with the snips and I'm releasing tension at certain points. And then I fold over the binding into the wrong side, pin it down, and slip stitch it down. And I do this for both pieces. For the design of the cote, I took inspiration from the original cartoon and took some liberties as well. I decided to decorate the armor with stripes and two circles, one of which would have the insignia. For the design, I am also continuing on what I did before and layering the foam pieces to be able to create a raised design. This time around, I am not doing the sandwiching technique for, with the warbler. Instead, I am just using one single layer that I'll be folding back because the foam will not really be seen because it'll be sitting on top of the fabric base I just made. This will allow me to save as much material as possible because in another video, I will be tackling the Samurai Eagle and that is going to take up the majority of the Warbler that I bought. After creasing out all the edges from my raised design and molding the pieces so that it fits nicely on my arm, I then go in with an X-Acto blade while the material is still warm to carve out the insignia. In season one, episode four, Suki says that the gold insignia represents the honor of the warrior's heart. So of course I had to make this detail.
Okay, so after some experimentation, I'm determining that to best get the coat that I want, I'm gonna be mixing these two paints together. And this container of brown paint is almost completely empty from when I did my shield. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be using this as a mixing jar to create a color that I need for this project. So what I have done so far, if I have done eyelets on one of them, and it worked out pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do them on the other one, is I brought out my hammer and one of my hole punchers. Okay, so I've run into a dilemma, and that dilemma is attaching the armor pieces to the fabric. Now, a lot of them have chainmail, and the chainmail gets sewn on, and there's also some of them who have holes in it, and then there is rope that is tied in between and then attached to here. So it's kind of like tying the piece to the fabric. And I don't want to cop out and use glue because that's going to look really weird and also not be stable. So I'm falling into the predicament where most likely I'm going to be drilling holes into this with my Dremel. I have no idea how the Warbler is going to react to being drilled with a Dremel, how the flex paint's going to react. I know the foam is going to be fine, but everything else is going to be a little bit odd and I might ruin one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do it on one of the smaller pieces that's easier to remake rather than the longer one and hope for the best. Looks like it worked. Okay, so I went to the store and I picked up this leather cord and this is what I'm going to be using to tie up the forearm part of the arm for these brown eyelets and I'm using this black cord to tie up these armor pieces onto the eyelets that I've made to weave them and it's going to end up looking something like this. I have to fiddle around more with the way I am laying everything down on this one. And then also I am taking some needle and some embroidery floss and tying off the ends 
so that they don't fray and they look a little bit better. To create the top loop of the armor, I am putting down the cord, clipping it at a certain point, and then using some fire to fuse the cord together. And what this does is this creates a finger loop for myself. I don't show it, but then I later go on ahead and tack this down to add more strength to the loop so that when it has tension, it doesn't snap away. And without further ado, this is the finished cote. I am so excited with how this turned out. I wasn't expecting it to come out this way. And even in the beginning of this project, I wasn't even thinking that I would be weaving armor to fabric, but I did. And I could not have been happier because it really added that rich, like realness to it that I needed. I'm so happy that the warbler actually looks okay and that my design doesn't look too far away from the Kyoshi Warriors. The biggest struggle creating this, not only figuring out how to do so, but other figuring out how to make a design that nods to the Kyoshi Warriors, but also is my own. Overall, I love this material so much. I have a feeling I'm gonna be using warbler a lot more in the future. It's just such a cool material, and there's so many things that you can do with this. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of the Kyoji Warrior Cosplay Series. The series is almost over, sadly, but the adventure has just begun. Because in the next video of the Kyoji Warrior Cosplay Series, I'm going to be venturing into the Do armor which is going to be the hardest part of this whole project. Thank you for watching. If you'd be so kind, please like and subscribe. Anything you can do to support me really helps me out. I have an Instagram also, where if you want to see more behind the scenes and close-up images of the costume, please head on over there. God bless and bye!